الحمد لله الذي أضعف ما حميده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضاه سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم جعلنا دعاة إليك وإلى رسولك أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين كفروا بالذكر لما جاءهم وإن الكتاب عزيز وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدين النصيحة صدق الله العلي العظيم والصدق رسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين ومن الشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Indeed all praises are for Allah <coughs> We praise Allah We glorify Allah We send peace and blessings on Allah's final messenger Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen How can we praise Allah Who is deserving of such praise That even the malaika Even the angels of Allah Those angels that are standing in Qiyam They are standing Worshipping Allah They are in Ruku Glorifying Allah They are in Sajda Singing the Tasbih of Allah from the day Allah created them until the day of Qiyamah when Allah Ta'ala would decree His command and He will make His announcement for His angels to rise up for His angels to come out from Ruku for His angels to come out from Tasbihat and Tahmeed and Tahleel when the angels of Allah will glance Allah when they will see Allah, subhanAllah, these angels will make a proclamation. What is that proclamation? Ya Rabbana, O oh our Lord, we were praising you. We were glorifying you. We were doing your tasbih. We were saying, La ilaha illallah. We were saying, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. We were saying, Subhana Rabbi al Ala. All these praises from the day of creation until now the day of Qiyamah. Ya Rabbana, O oh our Lord, we did not praise you as we ought to praise you. Allah. How can we praise Allah in the manner that Allah is deserving to be praised? But Allah Ta'ala has given this Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you continue to remember me. You continue to say Alhamdulillah. You continue to say Allahu Akbar. You continue to say Subhanallah. You continue to say La Ilaha Illallah. And bring me in your heart. Bring me in your remembrance. And that, my servants, that is enough for you. Imagine us compared to the angels. We sin. We sin with our ears. What we listen to, with our eyes, what we look at, with the tongue, what comes out from the mouth, with the limbs, we sin and sin and sin. And still Allah Ta'ala is saying, this is enough. What about those angels who don't sin? And they are saying, oh Allah, we didn't praise you as we ought to praise you. Just last week we were speaking about Al-Aziz. Allah who is the mighty. Allah who is the powerful, Allah the most honorable, Allah the most dignified, Allah the one who gives dignity, Allah the one who gives honor, Allah Ta'ala, the one who gives might and power and authority. This name of Allah Al-Aziz, how much did we understand this name? As a matter of fact, it comes in a hadith Qudsi about Allah. About finding Allah, about searching for Allah, the whole maqsad, the whole objective behind recognizing who Allah is. Who Allah is as a rahman the most merciful, as a rahim the most gracious, the most compassionate, as al-Malik, as the king. Who is Allah, al-Qudus, al-Qudus, 
the source of all peace. As-salam. Who is Allah? Al-Mukmin. Who is Allah? Al-Muhaymin. Who is Allah? Al-Aziz. The whole objective behind this is so that the believers, is so that the ummatis of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will find Allah, they will recognize Allah, because Allah for himself, Allah says to his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that all oh my servants, utlubni, search for me, search for me, where can we find Allah? By understanding who is Ar-Rahman. By recognizing the power and the mercy of Al Rahman, the might of Al Aziz, Utlubni, search for me. What will happen? Tajidni, you will certainly find me. Search for me, you will certainly find me. Subhanallah. Allah says, Wa in wajadtani, and when you find me, or if you find me, wajadta kullu shay, then certainly you would have found every single thing. Allah Akbar. If you were to find Allah, this is the goal. This is the object of life, finding Allah. When you find Allah, Allah is saying, then you would have found everything. Everything. Subhanallah. On the contrary, in futtani, if you have lost me, if you have lost me, that you did not make that search, fatatta kulla shayin, then you would have lost everything. Then you would have lost everything. Allah, Allah is our object in life. Allah is our focus. Allah is our goal. Allah is our qibla. Allah is our decree and our destiny. Allah. To meet Allah. It's not Jannat. It's Allah. Because Allah is greater than Jannat by itself. Allah is Al Jamil. Allah is the most beautiful of anything with beauty. Allah. It is to find Allah. So, how can we live with this name, Al Aziz? How can we live with this name? Subhanallah. We can live with the name Al-Aziz first by bringing Iman on Al-Aziz. Iman. And we need to understand what is Iman. Iman is not saying I am a Muslim. No. The desert Arabs in the Quran says, the desert Arabs, when they accepted Islam, they say, Amanna, we believe. We have Iman. Allah says to the Prophet, say to them that they have only accepted Islam. Iman has not yet entered their hearts. Let's understand that clear. Being a Muslim is one. But being a mukmin is another. Coming into Islam is one thing. But bringing Iman with the Islam that we came with into is another thing. So Iman is words. Islam is words. Sorry. When we say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulallah, we come into Islam. Isn't that so? That is what? Words. Iman is the follow-up to that word, actions. Now, now these words that we say we believe in one Allah and the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the last and seal of all prophets, Allah said, now we have to pray five times a day. Action. <laughs> Time for action. You reach a level where you, your money is of a certain amount, you have to give zakat. Action. The month of Ramadan comes, I am only a Muslim. Action, you have to fast. Allah gives us and blesses us with a certain amount of wealth that we are able to make Hajj. Action again. All these are action. These action is what proves our Iman. So how we can live by Al-Aziz is to accept the Qadr and the decree that he has placed upon every individual. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says, Ajaban li amril mu'min. How 
amazing is the affair of the believer. How amazing is the affair of the believer? In amruhu, inna amruhu kulluhu khair. That certainly all of his affairs, every single matter of the believer brings about goodness for him. Subhanallah. To add to that, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Walaysa dalik, laysa dalik li ahadin illa lil mukmin." And this is for nobody else excepting the believer, not the Muslim, eh? not the Muslim, the mukmin, the mukmin. Sometimes we might question and say, "But how this bad thing happened to me?" And we say, well, in this have good for me? How is that? I just invest in a business and the whole business flop. <laughs> Where is the goodness in that for me? Because I am a Muslim. That is why I can't understand. But if I was a mukmin, then I will understand the blessing in that for me. How? The Prophet says, whenever good touches the mukmin, whenever good comes to the believer, he thanks Allah for that. You eat some food, that is a good because somebody hungry. You don't complain. But that, is it, that little bit of food they give you here, boy. Yeah. That little bit of food they give you in this box. We buy a box of barbecue to support a jamaat. That is the only food they give you. Thank Allah, some people don't have it. Whenever any good touches that person, he says, Alhamdulillah, Allah, thank you. The Prophet says, in that brings his goodness. Whenever any misfortune, any calamities, any problems, any trials touches the believer, the believer, not the Muslim, the believer, the mukmin, subhanallah, he bears patience on that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in that patience, Allah brings his good. How strange is that? In other words, as a believer, you could never go wrong. Everything that comes, it comes the believer's way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala, Ajabtu lil mukmin. I am amazed. I am astonished by the believer. Who is saying this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal alayhi rahmah. He has mentioned this hadith in his musnad, in his compilation. He says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ajabatu lil mukmin. I am amazed by the believer. Inna Allah la yaqudhi lil mukmin qadaan illa kana khairan lahu. That verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not decree anything for the believer except what is good for him. Allah doesn't decree anything for the believer except what is good for him. So whatever comes our way is alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. This is how the believer operates. And when the believer operates like that, the believer is bringing iman on who? Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz. Another way we can live by this name of Allah, subhanallah, Al-Aziz, the one who gives honor, defends someone's honor, defends somebody's honor. Al-Aziz, the one who gives strength, gives strength to other people. Al-Aziz, the one with might and power, subhanallah, be obedient in regards to the power that Al-Aziz has given to you. Allah in the Quran, He calls the Quran Aziz. Aziz. Allah calls the Quran. Listen to the Quran Al-Aziz. Obey the teachings of the Quran Al-Aziz. Because the Quran for itself, it tells us, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالذِّكْرِ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ Certainly those who dis disbelieve, those people who disbelieve 
In regards to the dhikr, what is the dhikr? The reminder, the Quran that came to them. Those people who disbelieve in the reminder that came to them. وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ aziz. Let them know this book, it is such a book, it is mighty, it is powerful, it is honorable, it is respectable. This book, Al-Aziz, the Quran. The Quran. So in other words, those who disbelieve in it, after it came to them, after it came to them, they will face a serious punishment from Allah. Now bear in mind, this ayat is a general ayat of the Quran. It speaks about those who disbelieve in the reminder after it came to them. A question arises. Does this fall on you and me as well? The Quran came to Jibreel alayhi salam to who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Did it only come for Muslims? Did the Quran only come for the guidance of Muslims? This is a book in which there is no doubt. In it is guidance for those who fear their creator. Guidance for who? For those who fear their creator. Only people who follow in Islam. The Quran came for everybody for the entire world. Just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did he only come for the Arabs? No. For the whole world. So anybody, after the reminder came upon them, it came to them, and they disbelieve in it, they will face a grievous punishment from Allah. And look at this ayat of the Quran. Look at the beauty of this ayat of the Quran. Subhanallah. This mighty book, this powerful book. Allah Ta'ala says those who disbelieve in it. Not disbelieve but that we only believe in the Bible or we believe in the Bhagavad Gita or the Ramayan. Not that, you know. Those people who say the Quran is our book. But when the Quran say to pray, ah. When the Quran say to fast, ah. When the Quran says to give zakat, this is what? Disbelief in the Quran. Disbelief in the Quran. Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala he says he says that search your hearts search your hearts utlub qalbaka in the thalathati mawat search your hearts on three occasions on three occasions not many just three the first in the sima il in the Sima al Quran, search your heart when you hear the words of Allah. When the words of Allah is being recited, search your heart in regards to listening to the Quran. How much is your heart inclined towards listening to Allah's words? How much is your heart inclined to the beauty of the tilawat and the recitation? Or how much is your heart running away from the Quran? Search your heart and we will see. The music has taken its place in our hearts instead of the tilawat and the recitation of the Quran. So much so that sometimes we might be flipping a channel and we might be hearing the Quran being recited on the IBN channel or the TIN channel. The Quran is being recited. And the first thing we do now is we switch that channel we, every time we hear in Quran. And we switch to something different. We, we switch to something different. If your heart is running away from the Quran, the, even in the month of Ramadan, look and you will see. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. Search your hearts even in the month of Ramadan. The most blessed month for the recitation of the Quran. On the nights of Tarawih. The first night of Tarawih. Masjid is full. After that, people start to what? Stay home. The stuff starts getting smaller. 20 rakats start turning to 8. Why? We are running away from what? From standing up? No. 
We are running away from listening to the Quran. What is Abdullah Masood saying? Search your hearts on three occasions. First occasion, when the Quran is being recited, see how much your heart is inclined to it. That is one. Secondly, wafi, wafi majali se dhikr. Search your heart in assemblies of reminders of Allah. Those gatherings where the shuyuks will come, the mashayiks and the sheikhs and the ulamas and the scholars, and anyone giving a lecture somewhere, anyone doing a bayan somewhere, anyone having a class somewhere, search your heart and see how much is my heart inclined towards going to listen, to learn something about my deen, to sit down in the zikr. Simple as it is, sometimes people come from abroad. Just recently, we had a jamaat here also. Just recently, for five minutes, for five minutes, a hadith is being read. Five minutes, and people just get up and walk away. Why? We don't want to hear the words of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I have to go outside here, brother, waiting. We had an old talk. The business waiting, we have to go back to the business. Search your hearts on three occasions. This is the second one. How much is it attached to listening to something that will benefit the heart? Or how much the heart is what? Running away from that. The third, he says, Wafi awqatil khulwa. Search your heart when you are alone in solitude. In the depths of the night, do you wake up and cry before Allah? Do you spread your musalla and say, Allahu Akbar? Or are you prone towards evil and vices when you are alone? Search your hearts. On these three occasions, and if your heart remains gawful and heedless in regards to the Quran, it's running away. In regards to learning about your deen, it's running away. In regards to when you have alone time with your creator, it's pulling you towards evil and vices. On these three occasions, the Prophet وسلم, for Abdullah Masood radiallahu ta'ala, and he says, وَإِن لَمْ تَجِدْ قَلْبَكَ فِي هَذِي الثَّلَاثَ أَوْقَاتِ if you don't find that your heart is inclined to these three things, if your heart is not inclined towards these three things, he says, Fas'alillah ayyamunna alayka bil qalb. He says, beg Allah to give you a heart. For innaha la qalbalak. Because you have no heart. You have a dead heart. A dead heart. It's only beaten. Any heart that is void from the zikr of Allah, the name of Allah, the beating of Allah, any heart that is void of the assemblies, of the zikr of Allah, of the tilawat of the Quran, any heart that is void from connecting with Allah, he is saying what? That is a dead heart. Ask Allah to give me a heart. The Jews... When they used to hear the words from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ana Rasulullah, I am the messenger of Allah. Come into Islam, accept Islam. Kulu la ilaha illallah, tuflihu. Say la ilaha illallah, you will become saved. They used to, they used to say that, Kulubuna gulf. They used to say our hearts, our hearts are sealed, it's covered, it's protected. Those words that you are saying, it can't affect our heart. Because they used to call him Shair. They used to call him Kahin, a soothsayer. They used to call him a Majnoon, a madman. They used to call him a poet. All kinds of things they used to call the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Magician. That anything he might say, his words is full of magic. What magic does? It befogs your mind. Those words can enter the hearts. So they used to say what? Our hearts are sealed. It's covered. Our hearts do not comprehend your words. They used to say that. Allah says, But on the contrary, it is Allah who has set a seal on their hearts. Allah has set a seal on their hearts. Let us ask ourselves now. Do I have a seal on my heart too? Has Allah really set a seal on my heart? That when the Quran is being recited, I'm not inclined to it? 
Imam says, Allahu Akbar, Imam starts to recite, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmideen, my heart is counting how much money I have to go back and make. Is my heart inclined to the Quran? Is it? Search our hearts and see how many of us, we have no hearts. We have none. This is the words of Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala if we want to live by the name Al-Aziz, we need to follow the Qur'an. One ayat in one surah called Surah Hujurat, defending somebody's honor. Do you know what it is to be a Muslim and a believer, a mukmin, To defend somebody's honor? It's even greater than that house that we make tawaf around. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he looked at the Kaaba. He looked at the Kaaba. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. He says, Nazartu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila al-Kaaba. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took a glance at the Kaaba. He looked at the Kaaba. And mind you, this house of honor, this house, it is stated that a haji, a person going for hajj, when he bends his head and he walks towards the Kaaba, and the first sight in the first time he raises his head, he lifts his head and his eyes glances towards the Kaaba, that dua that that haji will make at that point in time on the first sight towards the Kaaba, that dua, Allah Ta'ala opens the heavens and he answers that dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looks at the Kaaba, he says, La ilaha illallah. There is none deserving to be worshipped except Allah. He looks at the Kaaba and he speaks to the Kaaba. He says, Ma at yabaka. How pure you are. Kaaba. Wa at yabarihaka. What a beautiful fragrance you have. Ask anybody who made tawaf around the Kaaba. The smell of musk that is perfume. That is perfume on the cloth of the Kaaba. Subhanallah. That smell that emanates from around the Kaaba. Wow. Travel the world and you'll never find a smell like that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How pure you are, O Kaaba. What fragrance you have. Speaking to the Kaaba. He says, Subhanallah. Wa a'zama hurmatak. How honorable you are. That people come from far and wide. Millions. They come to make tawaf around you. Millions around the world. They turn their direction towards you. You are their Qibla. Even all the prophets that came before, their Qibla was Jerusalem. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made dua from his heart that, Oh Allah, turn my heart towards Qibla. Turn my heart towards, my heart towards the Kaaba. Such honor Allah has given to you that every believer that will come after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and during his lifetime, they will have to face your direction. What an honor. He says, Subhanallah. But the honor of a Muslim, the honor of a mukmin, the honor of a believer is greater than your honor, the Kaaba. Could you imagine that? The honor of a believer is greater, more honorable than the holy Kaaba. Today, we defame. Today, we dishonor. Today, we disrespect one another. Today, we pull each other's other down. Today, we strip each other of their honor and their dignity that Allah has given to them. Today we do that. Today we don't try to help somebody or to protect somebody's honor. You look and you will see someone is speaking bad about somebody. We add fuel to that fire. Yeah, we have to train our two pens too. 
We don't try to protect the honor of somebody. Every single one of us sitting here in this assembly, all of us, all of us in this majlis, somewhere, sometime, someday, some moment, we fell short. We all commit sins. But alhamdulillah, we all have good deeds too. If somebody wants to be saying something bad about your brother or your sister, point out the good deed of that brother or that sister. I don't want to hear the bad. Because why? Who am I better than? Am I better than you? Are you better than me? We are not here for that. Allah Ta'ala is seeing. But we know very well that this person, this person is inclined to some goodness as well. We don't want to hear the negatives. We want positive. Stop them right there and then. Right there and then. In the Quran, there's a surah called Surah Hujarat. Surah number 49 of the Quran. Allah Ta'ala revealed this surah in the land of Medina. You know why? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he entered the land of Medina, the beginning of forming, of forming a community with good morals, Good social behavior was being, was taking place now. Allah started to reveal ayats of this surah to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the development of a beautiful community, a prosperous community, a striving community, a, commun a community that will be safe and well protected from all evils. Subhanallah. And what were the evils that, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to keep outside of this community? The first thing. He says, Let all you who believe, Allah is addressing, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Meaning who again? Mukmin. Let not a group of you scoff at another group. Don't jeer, don't mock at other, other people. Perhaps those that you are mocking, they might be better than you. That is the first thing. The second thing, don't let some woman mock at some woman, other women, because the ones that they're mocking, they might be better than them. Then Allah says in that surah, don't defame one another. Everything that happens in this surah, how Allah revealed it, one action would lead to another action, which would lead to another action. It's revealed just like that. When you start to laugh at somebody, what are you really doing? You're defaming them. This laughing at somebody, ridiculing somebody, you're really trying to what? Defame them. So Allah is saying what after that? Don't defame one another. Subhanallah. After that, don't insult others by calling them by names. So after you defame a person, you start to what? You give them a name one time. You give them a name one time. Allah is saying, don't do that. After that, subhanallah, Allah says, Bi'sal ithmul fusuk ba'd al iman. How bad it is to insult one's brother or one's sister after having iman. You have iman, and now you're insulting, defaming, laughing at others. Allah like is saying, how bad that could be. Subhanallah. Then Allah says, O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who believe again, avoid much suspicion, because suspicion leads to sin. Don't spy on each other. When you suspect somebody, you know what you want to do? Let me find out. We start to eavesdrop on their conversation. Yeah, that's the first thing. <laughs> when you suspect somebody, all leads to the other. When you start to spy now, when you start to eavesdrop on their conversation, you start to follow them where they're going, that leads to another thing. You start to backbite them now. You start to backbite. So Allah is saying what? Don't backbite. Would any one of you like to eat the flesh of your dead brothers? You will hate it. This was the beginning of forming a community, a society, rid of all evils. 
I want us to ask ourselves, we don't, we're not even going as far as the community. We're going right inside our homes. Look at our mothers, look at the fathers, look at the daughters-in-law, look at the sons-in-law, look at the brothers-in-law, the sisters-in-law, look, look at this family. And we will see within the family how much backbiting, how much gossip, how much spying, how much ears eavesdropping, how much laughing at this one, mocking at this one, defaming this one, dishonoring this one, right in the family. These ayats were revealed for a whole community. And right inside of a small thing like a family, we can't get rid of these things. Allah is saying in the Quran that if you want to live by Al-Aziz, to live by Al-Aziz is to listen to the Quran. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِذِكْرِ those who disbelieve in the Quran, in these ayats of the Quran, Lamma Ja'ahum, which came to them, subhanallah, for them is a serious punishment. A serious punishment. So to live by Al Aziz, this name, again, firstly, we have to bring Iman on him. Secondly, secondly, protect somebody's honor. Protect your brother's honor. Protect your sister's honor. Give strength to each other. Listen and live by and abide by Al-Aziz, the Quran. In this, we will find our success. May Allah, may Allah give us the reality of this life of the world and the reality of the life of the Akhirah so that whenever we strive, it will be for the Akhirah. Our focus will be Allah. We will empty our hearts from everything excepting Allah. Our hearts become inclined to the recitation of Quran. Our hearts become inclined to the assemblies of dhikr where Allah's name is mentioned. Our hearts become inclined towards prostrating before Allah in moments of solitude. We beg Allah that he will give us a heart. He will give us a heart that will become inclined to all that is good. And Allah Ta'ala will bring alive these dead hearts of ours. Wal akhir dawana and alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.